And I love science in general because I'm the kind of guy that likes to figure things out. I like a puzzle, I like a challenge, I like to, to, to learn things, and Flocks is a great system to do that in because it's really super complicated. There's polyploidy, there's hybridization, there's a lot of different species, they all look different, they grow in different places, so trying to figure out what kind of evolutionary forces or patterns are behind all that diversity is is really one of the things that I think makes Phlox a special group. In the desert southwest, Phlox amabilis, Phlox nana, and Phlox woodhousei all occur in diploid, tetraploid, and hexaploid populations. So it's this amazing opportunity in this particular region to look at repeatability in polyploidy relative to different aspects of diversity. So when we look at plants, just look at them out in the field, we can't tell if they're polyploid by just glancing at them. We need to study them uh, in a little bit more detail. Flow cytometry is a very quick method and we can run flow cytometry measurements for a lot of individuals in a lot of populations over a huge distribution and therefore with by linking that to chromosome counts we can determine the ploidy level for lots and lots of samples. In humans, we have 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mom, 23 from the dad. Now in plants, plants also have chromosomes, but they could have anywhere from just a few up to hundreds of chromosomes. In the plant group that we're studying, Phlox, these plants have 14 chromosomes, seven from the maternal plant and seven from the paternal plant. And this is sort of the normal expectation. But what we find when we look more closely at Phlox and lots of other plants is that some populations have twice that number of expected chromosomes or three times that number of expected chromosomes. And in plants, when you have these extra chromosomes, this is called polyploidy or sometimes cytotype diversity. Studying systems like Phlox really increase our knowledge of the importance of polyploidy and the role that polyploidy plays in diversity. Using Phlox as a model system, we're studying phylogenetic diversity, population genetic diversity, morphological diversity, and ecological diversity. And integrating these together helps us understand species diversity. What I'm most excited about finding out from, from this um, research is how the different um, polyploid and diploid populations and species of flocks are related to each other in, in evolutionary time. So we can actually um, figure that out from sequencing a bunch of different genes across the genome. So things that are um, less related evolutionarily that have diverged for a longer time have more changes in their DNA sequences. And so I can use those um, similarities and differences to basically build an, uh, a phylogenetic tree, an evolutionary history, or almost like a pedigree of, of how these populations and species are related to each other. One way to get at are these uh, populations of different ploidy levels occupying a different environment is to use species distribution modeling, which makes use of environmental data uh, across the range, and you use analyses that compare where do your diploid species occur, where do your tetraploid species occur, where do your hexaploid species occur, what are the uh, precise environmental characteristics at those locations. There's many ways that polyploidy affects plants or having multiple sets of chromosomes. Um, among the most interesting to biologists are the fact that having more DNA actually impacts things like cell size and just makes a lot of parts of the plants bigger. When you have direct effects of polyploidy like bigger cells, some of those cells are things like stomates, which control how much water flows in and out of a plant. So those things affect where a plant can live. So when they change, you expect them probably to live in a different place. And in the case of our Phlox plants, we actually find that to be true. There's one place where for Phlox amabilis, there are diploid plants and tetraploid plants, and they're growing very, very close together. When we actually look at soil differences, we find they're 
they're very different soils. It turns out that the diploids tend to grow on soils that are more fine and hold water a little better, but the tetraploids are growing on more coarse soil and the water flows through. So there's a lot of different traits at that site that differ between diploids and tetraploids. This Fox research is a really great opportunity for graduate student and undergraduate student research. Um, we're a very collaborative team, so students involved in this research get to experience all different aspects of it, from the field to the lab to the herbarium, and really get a, a broad sense of different approaches to looking at diversity studies. And together we've come up with ways that we can communicate the importance of plant diversity and polyploidy's role in plant diversity. We've had outreach events here at the garden, talking about our research and providing hands-on opportunities to see some of the things that we do. We also worked collaboratively to get to develop a teaching module that can be used in high school classrooms. We are hoping to invite some um, students from Fresno State to come work at the Desert Botanical Garden and work with um, docents, so um, the, the volunteers that show people around the garden and tell them, um, educate them about plants, and, and in learning this they can jointly learn about research, but at the same time learn about how to communicate research to the public and to other students, um, explaining things to people who don't have a scientific background, um, which is very important for all beginning scientists. So one interesting thing that we're finding is that polyploids are really adding to the diversity of the species. So they are adding morphological diversity, genetic diversity, uh, diversity in ecological tolerances. And this is something that we don't always think about and might be really important when we think about all of the plant diversity around us.